man, it feels good to be a bad guy. Telling stories that bring the underworld to life. Gangsters, mobsters, hustlers, monsters. Stars of the conversation as we sip on our libations. So come and share some laughs. It's true crime with a twist. Every episode's a banger. You don't want to miss. Infamous. Welcome to Say Hello to the Bad Guy. I'm your host, Locke. And this is the podcast where we drink, smoke, and bullshit about the life of historic criminals. Now, we're talking outlaws and gangsters. We're not going to cover too many serial killers. That's just a little dark for me, and this ain't no true crime podcast. But really, you can't call this a history podcast because I'm no historian. Just a history fan that does some research and bullshits about it with his friends. So speaking of my friends, let me introduce you to my guest host. All right, so first with us today, we got Lorraine McLean. Hello. And then also with us today, we got the Duke, Dan the Man. Woo! You sure the fuck do? No whack ass little timid hellos coming out of here. There's no picking on Lorraine. <laughs> I'm trying to get you pumped, Lorraine. I'm trying to be your hype, Dan. What's that? Duke, well, since we're. Is that alcohol? Yeah, you want to kick us off with the drink round table here? Well, I will say in the past, we've had people that haven't drank, and I have judged thee. And I have judged thee harshly. And I'm also not oh, going to name names, but some people haven't drank on the podcast, but then lied and just said, like, yeah, I'm drinking a beer just to be cool. I myself will be honest. I'm not drinking a beer. I'm drinking an Arizona green tea because I'm dehydrated and thirsty as fuck. And it's just what I'm drinking. But I will say Arizona green tea cucumber edition no one mm. around here in Detroit seems to have had it besides me in J Bone. And uh there's only two spots around my house that have it. And it's very hard to get. I don't know how it is in other states, but uh if you can find it, the Arizona green tea cucumber is delicious. I know it's lame because it's not alcoholic, but you know, I don't feel like faking the funk. I'm not feeling it right now. You could um thirsty as fuck. You can add vodka. Yeah, I could. I, mean, I don't think I have it. any vodka. <laughs> Way to be a negative influence, right? Like, yeah, no, try to be sober. Why are you trying to push it on me? Can you bring me one of those? Yeah. Okay, thanks. He says it's a cucumber tea. We uh, covered not that long ago, Kid Twist, Max Willman. He had made the celery tonic and would do the old, uh, how many cases can oh, I yeah. count on you for scam? Word. They're like, well, we're not really into celery tonic. Like, oh, okay. So only like five cases. <laughs> so I mean, are you more into that or more into getting your legs broke? What what are you more into? You know what? I'll just start you up with ten and we'll see how it goes. You know. <laughs> uh well, what about you, Lorraine? What do you got to drink? I have beer by Odd Side. It's called Bean Flicker Shamrock. And it is good. Did I have one of these on the podcast? <laughs> I don't think so. We've had bean flicker on before. I don't think the shamrock but one. What makes it a shamrock? What makes it shamrock? What's the twist in it's, it? It's it's mint mm-hmm. and chocolate. So it's mint chocolate beer, and it is so delicious. I'm gonna try it right now. I've already tried it. But I shall it. retry it, or or as we like to call it, drinking it. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what that's what we say. <laughs> yep, still it's good. I'm a big uh, Bean Flicker fan, so I did try the Shamrock, and I will agree, it's very good. Definitely recommend it. I think it's seasonal, though, so I don't know if it's even available still, so timely reference. People can jot it down, remember, for later, for when the season comes back around again. Well, I'm drinking uh, some bourbon on the rocks, and uh, we're not going to get into what kind yet, because it'll come up later in the episode. Ooh, teaser. Oh, it's a secret. Secret bourbon. Super secret bourbons in this bitch. Secret bourbons. <laughs> All right, this is our first episode with the new song. Oh, new song. Yeah. So, new uh, year, new song. This will be the first episode where we don't thank Six Wayno, Six Fo Swaino for letting us use his music in the intro. But, we still uh, thank you oh. and thank him for being him, though. 
Right. So still go follow him on Instagram at 6 fo swain 6 fo like F-O-E. I want to thank Cancer for letting us use his music in the mid-reel. But I figured since we're going with some new music, I wanted to try something uh, else out a little, throw some more new shit in the mix. So instead of covering a bad guy today, we're actually going to do something a little bit different. So today we're going to be covering this month in mob history. This ain't negotiation time. This is Scarface, final scene, fucking bazookas under each arm. Say hello to my little friend. Uh, you should do more of a like a radio style intro. This month in mob history. We we just did that. <laughs> All right, then just clip it and we'll just use that. Use it on the soundboard. New sound drops. So we're doing this this month in mob history for the month of January. Now, obviously, I've never done this before, but it's been an idea. I've been kicking around for a long time, and it's something that I've always been able to use as content for, like, an Instagram and sometimes on TikTok and that kind of thing. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. You all know how good I am at shooting from the hip. Something that's not a, you know, a hammered down routine. I'm always good on my feet with, so I think this would be fucking awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it could go wrong. <laughs> I think it's great. We're blending together. We have the bad guy socials, the bad guy podcast. Here they are blending together. <laughs> Even though we've never done this before, and I tend to be a liker, but I think January could be like the biggest month in mob history. I mean, that's they have New Year's resolutions. They're trying to get off the year to a good start. You know, if you're trying to hit that body quota, you start in the beginning of the year. Oh, no, there was no massacre in January. There was not, to the best of my knowledge. What happens next month? Oh, who's the historian now? <laughs> None of us still. <laughs> but, well, I just checked multiple sources, Lorraine and Locke. It both <laughs> turns out there's not a massacre in January. I think Zach Tobacco is the expert. He's the historian. Well, yeah, I mean, if by historian, you mean like a real historian with credentials and education. Yeah, yeah, if you're looking for credentials and like shit, I mean, <laughs> fuck bona fides. <laughs> so we'll get started. Now, obviously, we couldn't cover everything. So this would be like a highlight reel. Every time I'm on this podcast, it's a highlight <laughs> reel, son. <laughs> but I think the first thing we should do is we're going to get started with the birthdays. There's a number of big birthdays. When you look at mob history and mob facts, Guys that were born on and guys that died on is always a big one because it's a job where they die a lot. Now, I think most months I would probably not want to spend as much time on birthdays and deaths, but got some notable ones this month. So we'll start off with what I think is probably one of the biggest pieces of news and biggest birthdays. Oh, I was going to say that. Yeah, I guess I should have gave a poll. But the big one would be Al Capone was born January 17th, 1899. I never realized like he barely barely scores into the 1800s. Yep, barely. Just slid on. Slows a word. I mean, if we're going to nitpick what's a word, what's not a word, I mean, what are we going to talk on this podcast? He's no word (laughs) storian. Yeah. (laughs) I check multiple dictionaries. Yeah, so Al Capone would be the big one on January 17th, but then... What's the math on January babies? I mean, they were conceived in, in what, April? You think they're like, it was April Fool's? Like, ha ha, I didn't pull out. Ha <laughs> ha, gotcha. <laughs> well, no, because that would only be... Well, what would that be? Nine. That'd be... That'd be nine months. Eight, so nine it'd still months. Be, it's like ten. So Total. March. So the end of winter, everybody's cooped up. It starts getting a little nicer out. Everybody gets a little frisky. Mm-hmm. Starts making some January babies, apparently. St. Paddy's Day. So out of the who's who of mob history that was born in January, the first two was still on the 17th. So Al Capone was born on January 17th. Uh, So was Arnold Rothstein and Joe the Boss Masseria. Damn. Uh, Arnold Rothstein was born in 1882. Joe the Boss was born in 1886. So January 17th could be the most gangsterous day ever. I mean, those are three big ones. I'm not saying there can't be some bigger ones, but to all be on the same day like that is pretty crazy. I got two more on the same day. The next two, uh, January 20th. So 
1882, January 20th, Johnny Torrio was born. And then January 20th, 1883, Enoch Nucky Johnson, who was the person that the character Nucky Thompson from Boardwalk Empire was based on. Mm. Both born. Played by the great Steve Buscemi. Oh, so they're they're all older than Al Capone, but he was supposedly like the young guy. Who, yeah, he was the young he hot shot. So Arnold Rothstein was like a mentor to Lucky Luciano. Uh, and so Joe the Boss was like a friend of me. So he was like a mentor slash they end up beefing uh, him and Lucky. And then Johnny Torrio was the mentor to kind of some of those New York guys because he was originally in the five points game with Paul Kelly, but he ends up being uh, Al Capone's mentor. So, yeah, they were all 13 to, you know, 18 years older than Al Capone. Dang. Yeah, but I still think the 17th got it because the boss. I mean, right. Nucky Johnson, Arnold Rothstein, kind of a wash. Joe Tutorial, Al Capone, kind of a wash, but the boss kicks it in. So, it's yeah. official, Bad Guy Podcast, January 17th. Wait. Who are the guys on the bottom? Uh, uh, the 22nd. Uh, 1893 is Frankie Yale. This is the skinniest picture we have of him. He just slowly gets, uh, you can watch the growth of Frankie Yale as he grows in his mob career through via pitcher. And then the one next to him was uh, January 26, 1891 is Frank Costello, known as the prime minister of the underworld. Now, uh, a quick recap on Yale. He was like a violent enforcer sort of dude, right? Or do I got him confused with somebody else? So he was one of the early New York, like a Brooklyn dock mob boss. So before it was still the one big organized thing, when it was still a lot of clicks, Warren, he was beefing with Pagleg and Wild Bill Lovett. So the Irish, he was fighting for the docks over in Brooklyn were like his biggest enemies. And uh, he's known for uh, Al Capone was a bouncer in his bar. I think it's like the Harvard Inn. Oh, where he got That's, cut? Yeah, where he's got the cuts on his face and stuff um there's a bunch of different we, we we covered al capone you could get into that more but yeah that place was frankie yale's bar that he was working at like as he was oh yeah first coming into it all right damn so january is like a big six degrees from al capone month yeah <laughs> or i guess you could say that for most of the mobsters right like, well, one way or another they <laughs> have the connection to each other well i mean it really covers all the big ones because you got Al Capone's mentors, and you got Lucky Luciano's manor, mentors, you know, around the same time. So now we didn't cover, can't cover all of them. Uh, so I'm not going to go through all the dates, but there's also Joey the Clown Lombardo, uh, Ralph Capone, who's uh, Bottles, uh, Al Capone's brother, who was known for running a lot of the legal end of their bottling empire because they were beer kingpins. So he had, ran like the legit bottling business. Joe Bonanno who one of the five families in New York is uh, the Bonanno family was born in January and uh, Frank Nitty, who is a future Chicago mob boss. He took over after Capone. Man. Yes. Yeah, so there's a whole bunch in January. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's pretty uh, mobbed up month here. Now there was two more notables that I did want to show the pictures of though. Now I could, I'll post them on the Instagram or so people can go check them out there or just Google these names but we had to put these pictures separate because they're two of my favorite mob pictures all time. And it is Giuseppe Greco and Tony Giacalone. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Giuseppe Greco looks like, <laughs> I don't know. He looks like there's a lady on the underside of that picture that's not getting photographed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like Tony uh how do you say his last name? Ja it's Jackaloni. Jackaloni. Yeah, it looks like he's her father and he caught them. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz Giuseppe Greco now he's in jail. has a look of ecstasy in his face. He's like, "Yeah." <laughs> and uh oh Tony does not look that way. He looks very He looks very much like the principal from uh what is it? From uh <laughs> Breakfast Club. Yeah. I mean, I oh, think Oh yeah. He definitely looks like an inspiration for Polly Walnuts. I was going to say that, too, mixed with her. I think it's the the sport coat. Though. I don't think Polly Walnuts would wear that. He would have, if you remember the many saints. This this picture is from, like, back in the 60s or 70s or whatever. So, Tony Giacalone, he's a big guy to us local. So, he's from, like, the Detroit mob, which is known. I think it's called, like, the partnership. 
so they have a real tight ship like they're one of the only cities that uh have never had a snitch like from in their family flip to the government hell yeah that's the detroit mob son <laughs> right you don't hear of them much but that's why but uh that picture looks like if you were like how could i explain 70s mobster to somebody in one <laughs> picture here let's go with this tony jackaloni one Is and a uh, picture ai generated did you just type in 70s mobster what's so crazy about this giuseppe greco one because it's such a bizarre picture but he's le legit one of the scariest enforcers of all time over in Sicily. His weapon of choice was an AK-47. He was this crazy hitman. And the one picture of him we have, he looks like Jim Belushi getting a blowjob or something. <laughs> yeah. uh, it looks like he just took like the biggest rip from a bong and like just got done exhaling. <laughs> <laughs> So I definitely recommend... I'm uh, with you, Giuseppe. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely recommend either check our Instagram. Uh, just follow, go to the Instagram and follow us, like the pictures. I'd appreciate it. But either way, you definitely look up the picture of Giuseppe Greco. It'll be the first one that pops up every time. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, if that's the picture you have of a mean hitman, that's the one you show off. But yeah, so that's like a, a shitload of not just mobster birthdays in January, like mob bosses and like yeah. whole whole tiers of bosses. Like you got Capone and Denitti, John Torrio, like, like yeah. unless Jet McGurn, Lansky, Luciano, and Pittsburgh Phil were all born in the same month, I think January would take it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, so that's what I'm assuming when I decided to do this, I started looking and I was like, I hope there's enough content. Well, what about every single motherfucker ever that you heard of <laughs> yep. was born in that month? Like, oh, well, I guess that's a lot. And it seemed like all late in the month. The first half of January was pretty dry. And then they picked up in that second half. What is that uh, horoscope scope wise? The late January. Um, I want to say Capricorn, but I don't really know the only things i know is libra because that's me and oh, i don't even know what that libra. means yeah because october's having the best birthdays that's why well, okay Let's... see capricorn is the beginning of january and then it goes to aquarius oh so damn i thought aquarius was like supposed to like be peaceful laid back or whatever turns out they're pretty mobbed up you know the <laughs> age of aquarius was about fucking people up with AKs and Tommy guns. Well, the, see, that starts on January 20th. So everyone. Oh, so Capricorn. Al Capone is. Al Capone is. Al Capricorn. Al, yep. He's an Al Capricorn. <laughs> he is an Al Capricorn. So what is 20th starts? Aquarius? Aquarius. Mm -hmm. Who who all is under that? Johnny Torrio, Nucky Johnson, Frankie Yale, and Frank Costello. Yeah, so those are all Aquarius, and then the 17th crew, those are Capricorns. That actually checks out, because Frank Costello is known as the Prime Minister of the Underworld. Like, he was, like, a guy that would shake hands and do bribes with, like, politicians and stuff like that. He handled, like, a lot of that crooked stuff. Nucky Johnson literally was, like, a politician that just went a little crooked. And Johnny Torrio was always a thinking man's gangster, so... So Maybe. I don't, why does that make sense? Is that the way Aquarius are or something? Well, I thought that's what difference. you said, that they were peaceful or something. I don't, I just remember hearing something about that. I don't know, man. Water signs. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a water sign, yeah. I don't know. Like I said, I didn't know I was a Libra until I was like 28. I don't know what these things mean. I knew it because I never need to use a scale. I could always eyeball it. It's because I'm a Libra. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a huge, yeah, I'm a I fucking. What you did there. I'm a human fucking triple mm. beam. So on the other side of birthdays, obviously you have the deaths. So we had some major deaths also in the month of January. Some of the mobsters that died the month of January were on the 15th. Meyer Lansky, he died of lung cancer. Yeah, one of the rare dudes to just get out and live a long life and just die of an old dude of cancer. 
And for some reason, I don't have the year. I know it was late. I think it was in the 80s, maybe 82. In the 80s? Yeah, he died in 83. Yeah. Wow. That's what I'm saying. It's great that he was like one of the top guys in the mob and he just left, lived a long life and just ended up dying as an old man. It's crazy. Now, over on the right, you see we got Lucky Luciano. So he died on the 26th in Italy of a heart attack. He was deported because he was in prison. And then Albert Anastasia uh-huh. helped him work out a deal to get out of prison by helping uh, to help in America win World War II. So they let Lucky Luciano out, but deported him, and he died of a heart attack, 1962. In the process? No, he was over there for a while. He was like, like if you look at most pictures of Lucky Luciano, they're older pictures, because that was once he over, got deported over to Italy, and he didn't give a fuck. Like you, so you could picture, get a picture of him drinking coffee like every fucking single day if you wanted. He was just in Italy living his best gangster life and shit. Like, he kept getting close to America a lot. Like, he'd just be hanging out in, like, Mexico and shit. And they'd be like, hey, get the fuck. Get out of here, dude. Go back over to Italy. <laughs> he'd be like, my bad, my bad, my bad. He was like that little kid when you're like, get out of the kitchen. And they're like, uh, And they start going towards the door. We're like, no, get out. But, I mean, eventually, he died of a broken heart because he had to leave America. Aww. Eventually, when you leave America, America you die of a broken them. heart. That's what I always heard. So this guy in the middle, his name is George Remus. So he died on January 20th, 1952. What year did that hat die? That hat, a hat like that never dies. Man. Yeah, it lives on. <laughs> oh, that thing's great. So he's Remus. I wonder, because uh, there was a guy named Remus on Boardwalk Empire, too. Yeah, that's him. All right. So he was like a lawyer sort of a dude? Uh, he was a lawyer. Then when Prohibition hit, so he used to be a criminal attorney. So he worked with all these criminals and then prohibition hit and he was really smart and he can get these guys off all the time. And he's seen them all start making a shitload of money in prohibition. <laughs> so he's like, well, I'm way smarter than them. I can do that. And he just started slinging the fuck out of some booze and shit. And he's actually known as the, the king of bootleggers. Damn. Mm-hmm. He looks like guy. a character. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he has the look of, uh, the other guy, the guy that they always just sort of smacked around, who always wore dumb hats. I think his name was Jimmy or something. Oh, yeah. We covered the guy that he was based off of on the show before. I was think. it Mickey? Mickey Doyle? Yeah, Mickey, yeah. Mickey Doyle, yeah. Wasn't he based on someone? Didn't we cover that on the show? We did. Yeah, it was. The name was off a little bit, but it was a Polish guy that changed his name to an Irish name. So he didn't seem Polish. Which was so uh, weird how many people were like, ah, no, we'll be Irish. Yeah, it was a crazy time frame where that happened so many fucking times. We've covered people that were Sicilian and changed themselves to be Irish, people that were Jewish and changed their name to be Irish, people that are Polish, just whatever, just pretend like I'm Irish. I don't care. And what's crazy is like, just a few decades before, you wouldn't want to be Irish. So earlier I said that uh, my drink would come back. I had got this from Father's Day. I'm not sure. It was either Father's Day or my last birthday. A couple things ago, I got this. Uh, One of your days. Yeah. I got uh, this George Remus, King of Bootleggers, what? bourbon. Oh, snap. Look at that. Bird. He yeah. a different hat on. <laughs> He's a man of many hats. It is pretty good, though. Yeah, I'm sorry, but what kind of whiskey is it? What is it? It's bourbon. So he is from Ohio. He was originally from Cincinnati. And Cincinnati is like, there's suburbs in Kentucky that are suburbs of Cincinnati. Like it's across like the, the lake from each other, like river or whatever from each other. Yeah. Um, Just that it's got the, is it the Kentucky River? What is the name of the river? Is it the Indi- Indiana sure. River? The Ohio River, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that would probably oh. make the most sense. But yeah, that's just the border of Kentucky. There's a lot of towns that just, sort of split the difference on either side of the river right there. Right. So he was real. He's from Cincinnati originally. So when he started bootlegging, one of his big spots was a big part of North Kentucky is his territory. So he had some real good bourbon. And now I have some real good bourbon. (laughs) But yeah, so you look at the birthdays, a bunch of huge birthdays. Then you got three heavy hitters on the top as far as the deaths also. But, it's crazy that Luciano and uh, Lansky died in the same month. I never realized that. They were like besties growing up, like partners and shit. And I take it back. They were besties? I, yeah. 
Yeah, since they were ch- children. Yeah. They were children gangsters. all the way up through gangsterdom. And, yeah. and you should have cut me off because they were in this whole thing. Of like, yeah, Lansky got out. He got to live to his old man. Like, yeah, Luciano did too. Like I said, he didn't get to like... This is a different Stay old in America, man. He got deported and everything. Like Lansky got off like scot free. Like didn't get in any fucking trouble for anything, did he? Really? Not right now. Yeah, he got off completely scot free. And one of his big secrets he always said is, uh, he overpays his taxes. He's like, yeah, I just overpaid my taxes. <laughs> oh, yeah. They never seemed to mess with me, and he made a shitload of money. So I think the government's like, I don't know. I guess we should just okay. leave him alone. I said it a thousand times, what, the only thing that stops things from being legal and illegal is just, does the government get their cut? As long as they're getting their cut, they're set. But we still got the biggest death, Al Capone. Damn, born and died in the same month. Wait, born and died in January. Yeah, January 25th, 1947. Was one of those guys born on January 25th? Uh, nope. Hmm. Al Capone gets it all to himself. Yeah. I uh, died of complications from syphilis, 48 years old, <laughs> which doesn't sound old, but when you figure he took over the Chicago outfit, ran one of the biggest, if you will call it families or mobs or whatever, at 25 years old, it's a mm. lot of life he crammed into 48 years. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of that was syphilis years. So I mean, I think yeah. those go like dog years. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> like when you have syphilis, one year is like a decade. Wait, how many years did he have it? Well, they it's tough to say. They think he has had it probably in his 20s. So even in his prime, he probably had it. So some people think some people think that that's why they only had the one kid and the kid was born and had issues that him and his wife might have both had uh, because and they never had any other kids. So it could have been complications Mm -hmm. with syphilis. So they think he got it. He when he was real young, he used to work in brothels and he liked brothels his whole life. Like it was his jam. (laughs) He spent his most of his life. In a fucking uh, roaring 20s fucking brothels. You know what I'm saying? So he was just out there swinging that thing. And they think he probably got it early in his career working in the brothels and shit. That was when brothels your jam, your dick turns to jelly. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, shit, if he did get it from his 20s, that's a big, long run. Like, that's even more more perfect. Like, that's more impressive. They're like, well, he took over the mob when he was 25 and did all that. Like, I'd be like, well, he had syphilis since he was 22, so I mean, 48, that's pretty good. He had syphilis for longer than he didn't. <laughs> that is true. That's crazy. I don't, I don't remember life without syphilis. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. I just love them brothels, though. Other notable deaths from January were Jack Ruby, who killed Lee Harvey Oswald, who was suspect in the jfk assassination jack ruby wasn't a mobster per se he may have been mob connected <laughs> uh roy de mayo who we're probably going to cover sometime he was basically a serial killer that started a gang of serial killers uh but he was a mobster what? so we just call him a mobster <laughs> nikki scarfo who was the boss of the phillies through like the most violent era tommy de simone who joe pesci's character in goodfellas was based on and then oh, ignazio God. the wolf lupo who was the original biggest black hand member in he started off in uh like italian harlem but he partnered with giuseppe morello so he brought the black hand organization from sicily and giuseppe morello brought the the mafia the rules and the initiation and the you you know what i mean ranks and organization yeah and they partnered together to start the morello family which kind of was the original crime family in america and now out of the five families it's like the genovese family which at one point would have been uh lucky luciano's family did you get all that right yeah i wrote it down <laughs> you guys might not have got it but some fucking dork out there been screaming at at, no, at, I... at his laundry for the past two minutes no that, i got it moriarty turned into geppetto and luciano joined the gang and it... <laughs> I got it. <laughs> so hopefully in future months we won't spend as much time on uh, birthdays and deaths because there won't be as many, but there's a lot this time. All right, we're going to take a quick smoke break, refill our drinks, and we'll be back in a minute. Fake fathers, disorder 
shackles to break out of. They cower, soul of a mob, and they crowd us. Spilling in the street with heat like hot lava. Hot bottles, molotovs tossed and rocks follow. Ominous disciples like vipers, they strike quickly. Come at me like an army, I'm tearing you down with me. Spit like a barren rulers of bread like Kaiser. Roll with the goal and get beaten like outsiders. These amateur animals swing in the wrong jungle. Climbing the wrong vines mean these lions will snuff you. Concrete wilderness building our own structures. Writing our own order, appointing our own judges. Overthrowing authority, morally lack conscience. Fighting for survival with rivals with throat punches. Wow. We're back. Now we're going to move on to the January's pop culture contributions. Is this a quiz? Pop history. No. Pop, pop, pop culture. Um, so the first one's going to be uh, January 10th, 1999. I mean, I don't know. You guys got any ideas? Pop culture. Wait. January 10th, 1999. Yeah. Is that the day Prince was trying to party like? <laughs> it's close. Oh, 1999. The only thing does it have something to do with Gotti? Like that's the only thing I can think of recent. You got a reality TV show. Oh, Oh. Sopranos. Yeah, close. Uh, January 10th, 1999 was the first episode of Sopranos aired on HBO. Hell yeah! Wow, that's crazy. So it just had its 25th anniversary. That's fucking crazy. 1999 feel, was a great fucking year. I feel old. Yeah, Sopranos, I mean, not only was it a good mafia show or whatever, like, that was the, I think it was the first, if not, like, one of the first, like, HBO hour-long dramas. Like, that changed HBO for decades. At least it's the only one you remember. Well, I mean, it's the you first. Might... I mean, when did Oz come out? Was Oz before Sopranos? I think it was before, but but Sopranos was their first like giant hit thing. I think I would say that 
Oz was kind of laying the the groundwork for edgy but artistic television that people wanted to do. And uh, I, I think it kind of paved the way for Sopranos. But Sopranos then changed the way that TV was done. A lot of young people don't realize that actors used to not be willing to do TV. Because yeah, it was, it was like, less prestige. And uh, that, that's changed. And uh, a lot of that starts yeah. with Sopranos. A little side um, thing. Um, Amy Lee Sigler, who plays Meadow, and uh, Anthony Jr. I always forget the kid's name. Robert Eiler. Yeah, but uh, they got a podcast together. Yeah, and it seems like it's pretty what? good. And it's it's nothing to do with Sopranos. They're just really no, it's just them hanging out. Yeah, My I haven't brother listened and to it. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> I haven't listened to it, but I listened to him guest on a couple podcasts I listened to, and yeah. He seems like a cool dude. He's never watched Sopranos. Yeah, that's what he said. So Sopranos just had his 25th anniversary. Just rewatched the whole series. Yeah. Wait, you did? And, no, I would say everybody should. Yeah. I probably should. It's been forever since I did. I think I only watched like that last season like one time. And real quick, I just want to say, because Sopranos, it always goes down for having one of the worst endings, like finales. People hate the finale or whatever. I fucking loved it. I think it has one of the best endings. I get, I mean, I don't really want to say what the end for spoiler, but it's 25 years old. But you see, that's what's so crazy is now it reached that point where it's so old that there's a huge amount of people that haven't seen it yet. Right. Well, this is us telling him to go fucking watch it right now. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it, I hear, I mean, that is one of the famous things. People hate that fucking finale for some reason. And then a lot of people, I think, don't understand it. They're just confused. Like, wait, what just happened? Which I don't get. Because the whole episode leading up to it, they throw it right in your face what it is. I do think the finale is controversial. I think it's all right. I think the, a lot of the problem where people bitch about it, it's just it wasn't the ending that they want. And I think it's a lot different than the ending of Game of Thrones, where they just kind of mailed it in. It's just more like you don't like the way he ended his story, but that yeah. doesn't make it bad. It just means you didn't like it. But yeah, another uh, I don't know if we call it pop culture or what, but it's not mob related per se, but it's a big historical event for the show is January 31st. 2004 lee murray choked out jorge <laughs> rivera in his only ufc match oh my god what? we'll count it that's, yeah that's the best picture you could find well that's that's the picture <laughs> that he had put on the mural above his place in morocco when he had escaped after the big robbery <laughs> that makes the picture so much sweeter <laughs> to know that he got that picture above him <laughs> uh, that makes me like old Lee Murray a little bit more as far as legal events uh, January 17th 1920 the 18th amendment known as the Volstead Act an act of prohibition uh, you think they did that on January 17th just to piss Al Capone off as his 21st <laughs> birthday and shit that doesn't <laughs> did he his 21st birthday too Yeah, it was no way Mm -hmm. well the, back then 21st like didn't even mean anything it wasn't even a thing right but that oh. still is ironic yeah. don't you think it's an ironic statement mm -hmm. even though it meant nothing at the time other than yeah. it being his birthday but no well they also i don't think out knew who the fuck al capone was at the time either oh for sure not well, they it, it, it's just ironic that it's like damn al capone's 21st birthday prohibition i think Prohibition changed the way that uh, organized crime was able to operate because they were only ever to make able to make so much money like extorting and running gambling in their neighborhoods and stuff like that. And bootlegging came around and gave them a way to make giant money, which a lot of the smart ones were able to put into legitimate businesses that changed the landscape of organized crime and built the mafia and the national crime syndicate because they couldn't have did that without all, all that money and you went on to be the roaring 20s now afterwards you had the great depression which was a bummer but in the like in the moment 
the Prohibition Act, well, I mean, still in hindsight, it was called the Noble Experiment or whatever, but giant fail. It just shows you just can't take shit from people. Yeah. I mean, whenever there's a public demand, someone's going to fill that role. And if you make it <laughs> illegal, then that means it's going to be the criminals that do it. And so with something like drink, I mean, when you look at drugs and all that, but when you look at drinking, that was such a huge staple of America since before it was America, you know, I mean, since the very beginning. So to try to do that, yeah, the criminals are just going to take over. And that's a huge enterprise that just is not going away. And it did not. That was, that's what, like, <laughs> that's essentially like, the the vietnam of laws like eventually the american government was just like you know what we're just gonna take this back we're just gonna cut off our losses <laughs> that's reverse maybe they got black handed Ooh. Ooh. no but that's pretty much what i have <laughs> eventually they're just like you know what guys are bad you guys still want to get drunk and we made you guys have to go to the criminals that was our bad well Come on back to us. Well, I mean, that's what they did with marijuana, and now look at yeah, yeah. But they're still fucked up because the federal government still ain't getting their cut of it. Because uh, oh, they are not because uh, that's the big problem with uh the weed. They can't pay. They don't pay federal taxes because it's not federal legal, federally legal. But because of that, they can't keep their money in federal banks at all. That's why a lot of weed uh corporations or whatever like the ones that make all that money they give a lot over to charity and shit because they can't keep it in banks and shit it's weird laws but ain't that also oh, that's exactly while they ended up uh making that shit legal too is just so they could tax it just so they can get criminals on tax laws that was another thing it's just <laughs> all the tax law shit because that's of all the shit al capone did that's what they got him on was yeah, he didn't pay his taxes on all his illegal shit. So someone out there should be like paying extra. Mario Lansky. He paid yeah. his extra and that's how he got away. So uh the last thing we got to cover in January is, is uh January fifth, nineteen fifty. Tennessee Senator Estes Kafoffer. Cool name, dude. Where's the <laughs> He's a Tennessee congressman. I don't remember if he's a Senate. I think so. Whatever. I'm going to go with Tennessee Senator <laughs> Estes Kofoffer. Tennessee Senator Estes Kofoffer. Save some pussy for the rest of us, guy. <laughs> <laughs> so he introduces a resolution that would eventually allow for a Senate committee, which would be known as the Kofoffer hearings. From 1950 to 1951... They did. It was like a 13 different states. They subpoenaed witnesses like uh, Tony Accardo, Mickey Cohen, Frank Costello, Meyer Lansky, Virginia Hill, who was Bugsy Siegel's girlfriend. They brought her in and she just talked about, she was like, yeah, when I was with Benny, I didn't pay for anything. He just gave me money, took care of me, bought me a car. No, she said, bought me a house. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, he bought me a car, but I slept in it. <laughs> Does that, uh, don't they play the uh, video from this hearing at the Mob Museum in Vegas? Is this the hearing that they play the video of? Yeah, so when you watch that, if you go to the Mob Museum in Vegas, that's actually one of the rooms they had the hearing in. So the hearing moved. They went to like 13 different places or something like that to actually hold the hearings around the country. But yeah, that room is one of the rooms that had the hearings in. Yeah, that's where uh, me and Bean went. We went and checked it out. Well, you guys went and checked it out when you guys were there, too. Yeah. That was going to be I'm my next here. note. Nice segue. Oh, shit. Yeah. My bad if I stole it, but my sweet I was gonna... that was, my shit was a good segue, too. I was going to say, I feel like I've been in the courtroom. The Kafafa hearings, there was a lot of a lot of different interviews. A lot of people pled the fifth. A few people had different testimonies that didn't amount to anything, but it confirmed the existence of a national crime syndicate. From then on, it was once they were like, okay, 
we can start putting federal backing and FBI. You know what I mean? Like we know this is an organized thing that we have to attack. That's the thing that a lot of people forget that I even forget a lot of times is how originally the idea of organized crime was just like, what? No, these are just criminals that go out there and do crime. Like the thought of them being together and doing an organized corporation with a hierarchy structure. They're just like, no, there's no way. So the big, the three biggest testimonies you had Virginia Hill talking about Benjamin Siegel spending money on her. You had Frank Costello who got mad and stormed out. And he was like, am I under arrest? And they were like, no. And then he's like, well, then I'm out. And he got up and bounced. And uh, Fuck you. Fuck you. You're cool. I'm out. <laughs> and he ended up getting uh, 14 months in prison, which is crazy because outside of like a couple little things when he was young, he was one of the big mobsters up there with Meyer Lansky and uh, Lucky Luciano. And he was just on this other side where he was like real legit. And that's like one of the only times he ever did time was for storming out of the Kafa for hearings. So he wasn't he wasn't under arrest, but he got in trouble for leaving? Well, yeah, it was a subpoena. Yeah. So it was a federal oh. subpoena or whatever, because it was a Senate hearing. So they subpoenaed you to like, come and you gotta... Yeah, it wasn't a police interview. Like, he was summoned to court. You could not be arrested and still have to go to court. <laughs> Why didn't anyone tell him? <laughs> That's like going there for jury duty. You're like, where am I arrested? Well, then I'm going to fucking leave. Then just walk out. <laughs> they frown uh, on that. Ray McLean lives by her own rules. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized too, just kafafer like just sounds like an old man sneeze. Like one of those just like real loud ones that you <laughs> just kafafer. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Locks oh. one out right now. <laughs> He's doing a little kafafer off mic. <laughs> he's cacophon cacophon alright so uh, we covered it on the show multiple times but I feel one of the greatest my moments in history was Tony Accardo's testimony so I'm going to share the screen real quick his fifth amendment rights I decline to answer Can you, yeah, what ground on the grounds that it may tend to incriminate or lead me into something I decline to answer, decline to answer, decline to answer, decline to answer. You are not willing to help your government. Is that correct? You're unwilling to cooperate and to help? I decline. Mm-hmm. Okay. I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. One, two, three, four. Fifth. <laughs> I just rewatched that, the old Chappelle show uh, sketch of him just pleading the fifth. So Tony, oh, yeah, that's what you do. You keep your fucking mouth shut. Tony Accardo pled the fifth 170 times. Huh. I mean, that number can either grow or shrink. That's just based on how many fucking questions you want to ask him. I think he made his answer right. pretty clear on the first dozen. Right. <laughs> you you get what's going on. Now you're just wasting everybody's time. Yeah. They're trying to be all nice. Like, you don't want to help your government. Fuck no, I know. I they're trying to like blackmail. He's like. What do you think about that, you know? <laughs> oh, I was helping you. Oh. That's one of the best, like, with the First Amendment, the mm-hmm. right to free speech, like, you can just talk shit. And then the Fifth Amendment, you have the right to keep your mouth shut. Like, you know, <laughs> talk as much shit or as little shit as you please. All right. Well, that's the end of our first episode of this month in mild history. What do you guys think? Another jam-packed January. Yeah, there was a lot of big shit going down in there. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know what you would do, like say, at June. Not much is happening. Then we'll what? hang out in June and find out, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. No, there's probably some shit that happens in June. You, you don't know June. Not life. that much. Like you knew this much happened in January. Mm-mm. How many sources did you check? Because my man Locke, he checks multiple. Well, then we just take out, there was a lot of stuff we couldn't put into January, but still happened. So like different arrests and stuff like that. So there's always something going on. It just changes the level. So January is just off the chain in that there's 10 birthdays, 
five that or you know what i mean the numbers are off the charts Shit. you can do a whole 12 nights of january 12 <laughs> of wrestle, wrestling and i don't know yet what february has going on but i know there's one big thing so massacre oh, don't give it away lorraine they don't know <laughs> What if they well, Google? I'm pretty sure everybody what that listens they, to the show knows. What if, what if they Google February Massacre now, man? They'll figure it out. Yep. Shucks. So, we'll do this at least for sure, at least one more time, and we'll see how it goes. So, uh, <laughs> before we go, you guys got anything? No, it was a great way to kick off the new year. A whole lot of mobbing in January. A lot of mobbing. If you're in January mobbing. birthday. You're probably a gangster. Uh, and then at the end of this episode, listen to the rest of the new song and tell me what you think of the new song. I love it. So whatever platform you listen to us on, hit us up. Leave a review. Give us five stars. This is Say Hello to the Bad Guy. <laughs> thanks for coming and thanks for listening. Feels good to be a bad guy Telling stories that bring the underworld to life Gangsters, mobsters, hustlers, monsters Stars of the conversation as we sip on our libations So come and share some laughs, it's true crime with a twist Every episode's a banger, you don't want to miss Infamous criminal masterminds with fascinating lies Blurring lies between truth and lies We talk about killers with mob ties Extortionists, wise guys, crack jokes Have a few drinks, it's a good time Made men who made men tremble for a living May have ended up in prison, but they still made a killing Yeah, we keep it real gangster up on this side Some good fellas, but no more Mr. Nice Guy Chronicling criminal minds, we are street certified. Say hello to the bad guy. Say hello to the bad guy. 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 bad guy.